Welcome back, everyone, to On.net. I'm your host, James Montemagno, and we're continuing our series with the fine folks over at Wilderness Labs, specifically Jorge, who's going to be talking about some awesome things with IoT.net and MetaCloud. How's it going, Jorge? Good. How are you? I'm doing awesome. Now, we've done a lot of videos about different hardware that Wilderness Labs creates for developers that are building stuff with .NET to take advantage of putting .NET on awesome devices like we have right here. But specifically today, we're going to talk about logging, correct? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So the idea is you know, we have IoT. It's Internet of Things. So the basic use case is you have a sensor. Where is it going to go? It's going to go to the cloud, right? So yeah. um, in this case, we have launched Meadow Cloud uh, recently, and we're super excited about that. And in this, pro in this video, I want to walk you through how easy it is to send sensor data over Meadow Cloud. I love that. Like so we're going to get yeah. the data off this device, push it up to the cloud. Exactly. So, cool. so what we have over here is uh, a Project Lab V3. And what it's doing right now is getting environmental data of what we have here right now of temperature, humidity, and pressure. Oh, cool. And this is creating a log event that's just throwing it up to Meadow Cloud. So, um, do we want to dig in? you want to take a look? Yeah, let's do it. So right now, the device is on. Yep. Uh, everything's on the device. And you have it kind of plugged into your computer yep. right now and also connected to the internet, right? Exactly. So this is connected to Wi-Fi. Yes, yes. Yep. So basically, um, there is we have our Meadow website here, our Meadow Cloud website. And basically, you just need to sign up, create an account. And you there's a commando CLI. You can provision your device to link your particular device into your account. Cool. So there's no authentication or extra piping that you need to get these two together. So basically, if we have what we have here on the website, notice that I have probably a lab of different colors. This one's the white one that I have out here. Nice. And so if I select one and I go up to the logs, and I can check for the log events, and you can see my history of all the temperature, humidity, or pressure that I'm doing like every half an hour cadence. Oh, very cool. Um, so yeah, and uh, you can open every record here, and you can see the data that I'm passing in. Oh, which nice. It's pretty exciting. Now, all of this data, I'm assuming there's some things that are kind of coming automatically, but the, I see like a kind of a JSON blob. Mm -hmm. I'm assuming is that is that custom to what you're sending, or is the device kind of know what you want? You as a yeah, so you have a dictionary in your application, and you serialize, and you can send it over. Yeah, very cool. That mm -hmm. makes sense to me. Cool. Yeah. So if we go into, let me show you real quick on Visual Studio how we can accomplish this. So this is the Meadow Cloud login, which is all in the re in our Meadow Cloud samples repository. So all the samples are available right now. Cool. Um, so in this case is the Meadow Cloud login sample, and notice here the main controller um, we have this thing called uh, called the Cloud Logger. So this is the one that is this is the one in charge of just sending all the data to Meadow Cloud. So all you just need to do is register this cloud logger into a service. And then when we have every readings for every half an hour or so, depending on how often you want your sensor to do a reading, um, you check first if the network is connected. Mm. And you build your payload, which is what I'm doing right now. I have an environmental reading for the description. I have an ID. And I'm passing here the, all the readings um, that the sensor is picking up. And after that, I do um, the, I call the log event method, and that's it. That's all it needs. It, it just sends it over to Meadow Cloud. So the log event here, when you're logging this, is that's going to do the synchronization with the cloud automatically. Exactly. Yeah. Now let me ask you a question because you did check to see if you had internet ahead of time. What if you don't have internet? What's the best practice there? Like you yeah. Know? So great question. Um, so Meadow Cloud, uh, the logger is smart enough that. If you have no connectivity and it, haven't, it hasn't logged in internally, it'll cache all those stored log events mm. internally on the device. Oh, cool. So if the network falls and then it reconnects, it's going to try to log in. And once it logs in, it's going to send all of those send data, uh, th th those uh, event logs that have been queued up, stored in the device, and it'll sync automatically, which is oh, very pretty, cool. pretty handy. Nice. Yeah. So you got the events, which is pretty awesome. You're sending off to the cloud. But of course, there's stuff on the display as well. How's, how's all this kind of working together? Yeah, so um, we have a pattern that is like a main controller with subcontrollers, because we want to abstract and compartmentalize that every component that we're using on the project lab or in your Meadow project have all their, their sole intentions. So mm. if we look into the code and we have a display controller here, and as the name suggests, display controller, this is the one that manages all the stuff, all the logics to build the HMI screen. Okay. Um, that is the one that we're seeing on the project lab. And this is done using micro layouts. It's our very ultra lightweight um, framework or library that we're using to build these screens. Um, so 
uh, we have several controllers here. We have like a box to do like different like small uh, frames. We can do labels. We can draw uh, images as well. Oh, cool. And um, shortly after, we also have a line chart that I'll show in a different demo um, oh, cool. that you can actually get that data and you can also plot it on the device, which is pretty fun. Oh, that's really cool. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. So if we go here, we have um, absolute layouts. And that way, I have a splash screen, a data layout. So when I turn on the device, it shows a nice splash screen at the beginning for a couple nice. of seconds, and then loads up to the data, uh, the data layout. And so, um, so yeah, as I mentioned, I have, we have different colors, boxes, labels, and this is all wired very nicely. You have to just initialize and tell them where all these components go, and then you can update them by basically just changing properties, and that will trigger all the cascade. Of all the of all the controls to update the display very easily. Oh, very cool! So yeah. if we pull up the device again on the screen, you can see that kind of this code is mapping specifically to like displaying these different exactly. things. Exactly. Yeah. 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 So it, it gives you also the the time and date, and also there's different font sizes. So there's a, a smaller one there. It'll tell you when was the last time that the cloud loggers successfully mm. sent oh, cool. the data to the cloud, which is very very uh, handy. And um, yeah, so this is a uh, this is a project available in our GitHub um, repository, so you can go and check it out yourself. Awesome. This is great. Uh, thanks for giving us an overview. And I love that it's also kind of like Game Boy themed in, in yeah. a way, yeah. uh, which is really cool. Unintentional, maybe, or super <laughs> intentional. We'll see. Well, thank you so much, Ray, for showing this off. And of course, we'll put links to all of the other videos in the Wilderness Labs and Meadow series. So if you're looking to build IoT solutions with .NET, check them out. And we'll, of course, put links to everything that Jorge showed off today. Thanks for tuning in. And if you did like this video and you're over on YouTube, jam that like button. And don't forget to subscribe. So until next time, I'm James. This is on .NET. And thanks for watching.